Hi guys, uh, welcome to today's game. We're doing a version of the Battle of Crayon in 1814, part of Napoleon's defence of Paris. Here we have uh, Ney and Victor are uh, assaulting a series of uh, Russian defensive lines. Um, let's have a look at the forces we've got in today's game. So we start here uh, on the left. Um, we've got Ney uh, moving up to assault uh, this village already held by the Russians. He's got uh, five battalions of Young Guard. Uh, we've got two battalions there of Voltigeurs and three battalions of Trailleurs. Um, they are all line or second rate given the massive uh, depletion of Napoleon's forces and the influx of brand new uh, raw recruits. Moving across to Victor's forces and his division, we have uh, six battalions of provisional young guard, so these are just uh, light infantry that uh, I'm using for these, um, and these are again all conscript or second rate, apart from the guard flankers who are uh, involved and are veterans. So we've got uh, a brigade of three units, a brigade of four units, then three battalions of young guard and two more battalions of young guard. And then on the flank we have the French guard cavalry, so we have two regiments of guard lancers and a regiment of empress dragoons and we have another unit of line dragoons available in reserve. The uh, French guard cavalry are only fighting as veterans because of the very poor quality of their mounts. Now the Russians are up on an escarpment, which you probably can't see on the video so well. Hopefully you can see some signs of the escarpment there. And that will be a uh, difficult terrain for anyone to climb and especially for the cavalry. We have a unit of uh, Russian hussars on the flank. And then we have their first line, uh, three battalions of Jaegers. These are line and veteran. Then we have three battalions of regulars, uh, one battalion of line and two battalions uh, of second rate. Uh, and then we have the garrison of the village, which is another battalion of Jaegers and a battalion of line. In the second line for the Russians, we have uh, two more battalions of line, and here in the village, two more battalions of grenadiers, and we have two battalions off table. The Russians have two artillery batteries, one for the first line and one for the second line. The French have uh, an artillery battery in the center with Victor and a battery off table with the Young Guard, and then we have a limbered up horse artillery battery uh, over here with the Guard Cavalry. So we'll see how this goes. We've got Dan playing today. Charlie may join us, but he's thoroughly engrossed in watching YouTube at the moment. So we'll be back with the start for the first turn. We've rolled for activation. Uh, my um, brigade in the centre here went hesitant, otherwise everything is active and both my artillery batteries have artillery assault go off. Um, for Dan, he put artillery assault, uh, sorry, infantry assault on both young guard brigades but didn't have enough ADCs for re-rolls, took a risk. I think the larger brigade, Dan, is that right? Got yeah. infantry assault off but the smaller one didn't. Otherwise, most of the rest of Dan's units went active. Is there any other hesitant ones, Dan? The Unfortunately, the cavalry are hesitant as well. All right, that's uh, it. Let's roll for uh, activation and initiative. Uh, so the Russians are at minus one, and I think the French are at minus two. Is that yeah. right? The Russians roll a massive six. We get eight. The French get an eight, so despite their modifier, they will go first. So we'll start and see if anyone charges as we start this turn.
Colonel has arrived and he's decided that his command is the elite French cavalry, so uh, that, uh, that seems to suit his attacking nature. Uh, they were unfortunately hesitant, but Charlie has taken the opportunity of being hesitant to deploy uh, his horse artillery battery, so we, uh, we may see that firing this turn. Uh, Dan has moved forward his infantry uh, brigades in the centre. These are the provisional young guards uh, and the other uh, flanking battalion here. The Russians have deployed some of their battalions into line to try and give them some protection from French battery fire. Over here, uh, Dan charged in with the young guard who had infantry assault. He did take three casualties from defensive fire, but passed uh, a necessary discipline test, so that charge will go home. Uh, and that's it for movement. Now let's do some firing French to start first. Let's start on this left, left flank, Dan. Um, I guess with your skirmishers first into the village. So it's um, minus two dice, so it's just one shot um, into the village. Okay. You have your off-table artillery battery, which could also fire into the village if you wanted to. Uh, it would be at effective range. Can it fire any? It can fire, it could fire at any viable target, so it could do long-distance counter-battery fire. Could fire at these battalions away on the ridge over there. Um, I think... I think these guys over here are probably out of arc of fire of it. Um, so it's supporting the young guard, so it should really be a support in the attack on the village or the troops behind the village. Okay, so two dice. Charlie, could you check this on the table? So this will be at minus one for firing into cover, and then it'll be at half effect. Wow, that's pretty good. So that's a ten at effective range, Charlie. So that goes down to a nine. Okay, so that'll be one casualty and a discipline test on the relevant uh, Russian battalion. Were you firing at the Jaegers or the Lion Infantry? The Lion Infantry, so we'll do their discipline test. They roll a six, so they will go unformed and take their first casualty. All right, Dan's done some good skirmisher fire. He's caused a couple of casualties with his first shot against the Russian skirmisher screen here and another couple of casualties down on the right. Now his artillery battery up on the ridge is going to open fire at this infantry battalion in the open. Is that right, Dan? Yeah. Okay, you no, it won't be close range. It's be, got to be more than 12. It's at effective range, yeah. Okay, and eight. What's eight at effective range, Charlie? Two casualties. Okay, two casualties on the Russian unit at the back. All right, and then, Charlie, your horse artillery battery. Um, are you going to fire at the cavalry up on the escarpment? We'll give you minus one because you're shooting a long way uphill. Um, you're a five, that'll go down to a four, that will be no further effect. That's the end of the Russian firing. I'll do the, sorry, French firing. I'll do the Russian skirmishes and come back with the Russian artillery. Firing. All right, so uh, my battery down here is going to open fire uh, all the way across to this young guard battalion, although it'll have to be that second battalion because the first one is charged into the village. So the one that's uh, not committed, this will be at long range. Let's see how we do. We roll a three, which I think is a fatigue casualty, isn't it, Charlie? Uh, but one casualty from the combat dice, so that's one casualty on that young guard battalion. And then the second Russian battery with artillery assault will also open fire. It will fire at, um, I think it'll have to fire at that back French battalion to make sure it's clearing its own troops. Oh, because you're in column. Are you at effective range there, though? I think you might be out of effective range. We'll, we'll check, but that's an 11, so that's pretty good. What's 11 at uh, long range, Charlie? Two casualties and discipline test. And then one more for the um, combat dice. So we'll just check that range. Yeah, we'll just check that range, uh, but that is three casualties in total and a discipline test. Dan did well. He rolled a 10 on his uh, discipline test, so he's passed, but he has taken five casualties on that battalion as it did turn to be uh, out to be in effective range. Let's see how the first combat of the turn goes. Dan's attacking with two battalions against the Russians in the village. He will start, uh, well, we'll work out the combat dice and come back with the fight. All right, so uh, we're all fighting at line grade, uh, although a couple of the battalions are second gun rate. They haven't taken enough casualties yet. So let's see how we do. Uh, Dan, unfortunately for me, is attacking with eight dice worth as two battalions going in. I'm defending with one. I do quite well. I roll three casualties. Dan rolls four. I do get the option to think about whether I fight on. Right, so the uh, young guard have done well. They have captured the village. The Russians decided it was best to retire. 
uh, as the young guard would have significant advantage in the second round of uh, fighting. So uh, the Russians have pulled back out and uh, the young guard now occupy the village. All right, that's it for turn one. We'll move on and start turn two. All right, so with infantry assault going off on Dan's uh, other young guard uh, brigade, that has also assaulted the second part of the village here. And the rest of the young guard are moving up through the fields on the flank of the village. The Russians have fallen back in front of the assault here. In the center, we don't have infantry assault yet in place for the French. So their uh, battalions are just moving up to the edge of the escarpment. The Russians remain deployed in line. The French heavy cavalry has reached, or the guard cavalry has reached the bottom of the escarpment and discovered that they cannot get up it with their horses. They have found a local guide, however, who's shown them a way round the flank of the Russian position and the escar escarpment. We'll see where that brings them out in due course. All right, that's it for movement uh, for both sides on turn two. We'll now do some firing and then some assaults. All right, so we've done skirmisher firing. Across the front, the Russians took a casualty in this battalion in the woods, and they've lost a base off the skirmisher screen down here, otherwise relatively ineffective. Charlie, what are you going to fire your battery at? Cavalry. The cavalry. All right, this will be at long range. You roll a five. That won't be anything at long range. All right. Um, Dan, your battery in the centre, firing at the same target. OK, three. That will be a fatigue casualty on yourself. Um, Charlie, do you want to pop a fatigue casualty on that battery? And then down your off-table battery that's supporting the young guard. Any target you want to fire them at? I think that one there. Uh, I think you've probably got to fire at one of the ones on the escarpment because they're behind the village, so they won't be able to see that. You could fire at that battalion there, or you could do counter-battery fire against that one. No, it's at long range, so you don't get any combat dice. But still pretty good. Nine, do you want to check nine at long range, Charlie? Minus one for firing up onto the escarpment. So that would be an eight at long range. One casualty. One casualty, all right, we will put that on. That's the end of the French firing. We'll now do the Russians. The Russian battery on the left uh, had no impact. Uh, it was firing long range counter battery fire at the French over there. We'll now fire this battery down here. It's going at this French battalion uh, at the rear of this formation. So I will get two combat dice on top of this. So that's a seven, and then the combat dice don't cause any extra casualties. So a seven at effective range, we decided last time, is one more casualty on that battalion. So no great effect from the firing in this turn on either side. Let's now do the hand-to-hand -hand combat as Dan and the young guard try and attack the other part of the village. All right, so this will be a probably good attack for the French. They get uh, two battalions going in, and they are higher morale than the uh, Russians. So let's see how the Russians do. They roll well, they get three casualties. The French only get four. No, I we get more than four. One, no, you've got to get four. Five, four, four, five, four, six. I think you need to re-roll that one that's standing on its corner again, Dan. <laughs> I might argue that's either a two or a one. Dan is arguing it's a four. Please roll that one again, guys. No. So it's four casualties to three, still a pretty good result, and I have to decide whether two staying. Or okay, so we're at the start of turn three, and the French uh, young guard have broken into uh, this village, but taken uh, both halves of the village and thrown the Russians out. Those forces retain infantry assaults to capture the ridge line uh, and uh, by this artillery battery, so they'll carry on. Dan and Charlie managed to get infantry assault off on all their brigades in the center. Meanwhile, the cavalry continue to try and mount the escarpment. For the Russians, all brigades are active, but they don't have initiative. All right, um, over to the French. All right, so uh, no charges uh, from the village, uh, as they've dislodged all the Russians from that. But the new infantry assault orders are allowing the second brigade of... Uh, uh, no, these are the provisional young guard under Victor, supported by the fusiliers of guard, have crashed into this uh, Russian line at the bottom of the escarpment. The other French troops are starting to move up. They've got infantry assault orders are, but because of the steepness of the escarpment, have decided not to charge this turn. So let's start uh, down here. As we do our charge resolution, there will be a defensive volley for the Russians first. All right, so the Russians will open fire. It'll be a standard volley. It'll be minus one, because you do have cover from the trees. I do get a casualty dice, because you're in column. I roll an eight, so that becomes a seven, Charlie, and nothing from the casualty dice. One casualty. Just one. For a standard oh, volley. That's, that's 
two casualties, so that will be one on each of those battalions, Dan. But that won't stop you charging home. Let's now do the charge. So this will be a straight roll off. Uh, two dice for each of us, Dan. Let's see how we do. The Russians get a storming four. The French get a storming five. So the uh, French have won by one. Oh yes, you can re-roll down because you've got a support. So can I, because I also have a defensive support. I'm going to re-roll my one to a one. And Dan rolls it to a seven. So Dan has a one by three. So on a charge result, infantry versus infantry, you take the ground and I retreat and take 1d3 casualties. All right. We'll move those Russians back, and the French continue to drive forward. That's far this uh, skirmish screen, the firing out of the village, not hugely effective. Uh, but the skirmish screen that is uh, hiding the other side of this wood uh, did uh, fire out and cause um, two casualties on this Russian infantry unit. Um, and now we're moving on to artillery. So your artillery battery in the centre, Dan? I'm going to fire that one. OK, that's at effective range. Roll a nine. That caused it two casualties and a discipline test. Oh, that's cocked. That's a six, so they go unformed. Should be an advantage for the French. All right, uh, you've got your off-board artillery that's supporting the young guard. Um, Which of these is more casualty? Uh, the one, uh, they're both about the same, five and six. The one on the right. I'll buy the one on the right. Okay. So it's a bit long range. That's a nine. That is pretty good. That's one more casualty. And a discipline test on them. Let's see how they do. They roll a two. That's not good. They retreat uh, off the table. And that's the end of that battalion. That's a bit of a tragedy for the Russians. So this Russian artillery battery is going to um, uh, fire at that French unit emerging from the forest. Let's see how we do. We think that's a long range. That'll be a four. That will be no effect. Uh, it's a three for a fatigue casualty. So they'll be all right for that. Uh, and then this battery here. We'll fire actually at the Dragoons. We'll fire at the further unit of Dragoons, as I think they're the one in our arc of fire. I think this will be at effective range. We roll a nine. So a nine at effective range will be two casualties and a discipline test on the Dragoons. Do you want to just check from the middle of the base to the closest point? Yeah, it's less than 24. So that was at effective range. Yep, so two casualties on the Dragoons and a discipline test. So two dice for the Dragoons, what do you get? Eight. They are fine, they love it. On they keep coming. Let's give you the cash to counter. Right, that's it for Russian firing. I don't think we've got, ah, we have, have we got hand to hand? No, you broke through and pushed the Russians back in the center. So that's it. That's the end of turn three. Let's move on with turn All four. Right, we've got some artillery fire coming up uh, in turn, what turn are we on? We're on turn three or yeah, in turn four? Turn three. We're on turn three. No, we can't. Must be on turn we're four. On turn four. I think we're on turn four. Um, no, we're on turn five actually. No, we're not. Because turn three was when those dragoons came on, and then they moved up in turn three, uh, and now you started going up the hill. So that's turn. It is turn four. All right. So we've uh, fired the skirmishers. Uh, did anything cause notable casualties, Dan? No. Yeah, down here again. Uh, we're in real trouble now. We've taken nine casualties and had to take a double discipline test because the Skirmishes rolled a double six, but we did fortunately survive that. All right, over to you and your artillery, Dan. I'm going to shoot at that one. Okay. The recurring target at effective range. Seven. We get a seven. What's a seven at effective range, Charlie? Seven. Effective range. Two casualties and a discipline test. A discipline test on a seven? Okay, thanks very much. And Charlie, you're our horse artillery battery. What are you going to fire at? Fire the line. Uh, the line on the hill here? The oh, one that red one. And you've got to fire at the closest threat. I don't think you can fire at the red one. I think you have to fire at that one because they're closer. A three, that's a fatigue casualty. Bad luck for those. And then you're off table. Yeah, I don't think you can shoot at them. They're too close to the buildings and your own troops. You can fire at the one in the rear or the one on the hill. Which one do you want to go for? Okay, no casualties on me. Okay, so this will be at long range. 
Oh, pretty good. A nine. What's a nine at long range, Charlie? Is that two casualties? I think it might be. One. One and the discipline test. Okay, let's just give them a quick roll for them. We roll a six, so they go unformed. Yeah, I know you were hoping for another one of my units to go screaming pell-mell off the table, but no such luck, Dan. All right, let's fire with the Russian artillery. So all the French down here are cowering in the woods. Dan has specifically uh, declared that they're all just out of sight within the wood line. So uh, my artillery can't fire at them this turn as they've moved into that position. So we're back, I think, to counter battery fire. So we'll fire at long range against your artillery battery. That's a four. That'll be no effect. And then my battery on the hill here, which does have artillery assault, will again, uh, I don't know whether we can go at the Dragoons, because Charlie moved the Dragoons off to the flank. So we'll go at that rearmost battalion um, in the bottom of the valley then. Of yours. All right, let's see what we do. This will be probably at effective range. We'll check back in a second. A nine, but no bonus casualties. Charlie, could you clip a... Nine, a nine... Range 16, so that's about 18, so definitely at effective range. Wait, effective range? Yeah. Nine, and a discipline test? discipline test? Okay. How many casualties have they taken, Dan? Eight. Okay, so that'll be a discipline test at minus two. One more. Uh, six. Okay, uh, at minus two takes it down to a four, and those ones are conscripts, and they are in line. So I think you might lose one for being in line, which might cause them to why, retreat. Why you put them in line? Because they take less casualties from artillery. Um, recruits, it is minus one. So that takes you down to a three. So you are forced to retreat and you lose D3 casualties. It's take another casualty. That's actually really good for and that. then you have to go back at least 18 inches. You have no one to fall back behind. In fact, no, you're already behind your own formed troops. So you, I will check that, but you might not have to leave the table. Right, so it's turn uh, five, and uh, the Russians yet again have uh, failed in their initiative role, lost initiative every single turn. But there have been some developments with our ADCs. We've released this left-hand brigade from reserve, so that's available for deployment now to protect my left flank. Most of the rest of the other Russian forces are active and we have artillery assault off on our battery in the center the french have artillery assault off on their main battery in the center now let's see what happens as these french cavalry troops complete their march up the winding path let's see where they appear on the cliff top. right so the russians have been surprised the french have appeared on their flank they uh, their guide uh, showed them a way up to the top of the plateau and they are charging the Russian hussars that were guarding the French flank there. I have allowed the Russian hussars to turn to face uh, because they were a reasonable distance away from the plateau and probably saw the French cresting their eyes and forming up, certainly in my mind. All right, so we've got a charge going on as the guard lancers come in against the hussars. We'll have a look, see what else I might have charges going on this turn. So this um, Central Young Guard Brigade has charged out of the village into the left-hand end of the Russian line, uh, into the unformed infantry. A whole brigade of Young Guard has emerged from the woods trying to charge the guns, but all three battalions were really, really unfortunate. All went unformed as they charged up the hill, so that will uh, be um, a problem for them. Otherwise, in the centre, everything remains unmoved, and the Lancers have charged in against the Hussars. We'll start with the charges right, there. Starting with the uh, assault by the Lancers, plus two to them. Okay, it looks like you've got a six there, Charlie. And we've got a nine. The Hazars win, bizarrely, the hand-to-hand -hand combat. Though. I did get a double six. <laughs> no, you did get a double six, but unfortunately all through threes. So that's a minus one for the charge. One minus one, the French cavalry charge in and the, Prus the Russian Hazars counter charge. All right, let's do some of the uh, charges down here. Let's start in the centre, where at least I've got a chance. I've got my artillery firing at close range, large battery uh, against attacking columns. Let's see what we get for this. Now let's do the defensive fire as the battery opens up. Wow, that does, that does not look good. That's an 11, so that's four casualties. 
nothing from the combat dice but four casualties on the attacking French battalion. Right, so the French try and charge home. They uh, are unformed, they took their discipline test. It didn't affect their formation, they stay unformed. It's uh, minus two for being uh, unformed as a modifier, minus two for the casualties they took in the charge, but they gain one by attaching their general. So this will be a, a minus three, and the French do benefit from the re-rolls. Again, the Russians do well, they roll a 10. Dan is looking a touch disappointed. Win. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, let's see what happens though. You roll a nine, are you going to do a re roll? It will be a re roll at minus one. So a nine goes down to a six, so you will have lost by four at the moment. Uh, you would have to retire with one casualty. The worst one is you retreat with one d3 casualties and. Um, the supporting units, I think, retire. But, you know, at the moment you're at minus three. Even if you got a... The best you could get is a five, which would be plus two. That would take you to stopping and volleying in front of the guns. Okay, but if you get a six, though, on the three? Yeah, that, you, you adjust it down to a five because it's a minus one. No, you only get that on the first roll. Okay, so uh, you uh, retire, didn't you? That's what we said. You take one casualty and you retire. So the guns did something useful. The, uh, that defensive volley did cause the French to recoil, so they've uh, poured back into the woods. Um, but now we have a much better chance for the French here as they charge in against this unformed uh, Russian uh, unit down here. They are uh, going to count as conscripts and conscripts at minus two. Um, so that will be minus three modifier to start with. Uh, Dan, you are attacking as line. So that's minus three. You've got a re-roll. You're putting your general in. Um, I'll put my general for this brigade in as well. So that will cancel out. So it's still minus three. But the French have uh, one re-roll. It? Yeah, it's one yeah. re-roll, isn't it? The Russians roll a magnificent five. Okay, the French currently have a seven, Six. and they stay at a seven. So I'm on. Uh, so I go down to two. You're on seven. You've won by five. If you'd won by six, it would be a breakthrough. But on a on a five, you take the ground. I take a further one d three casualties. Come on, six. Yes, yes I take three. The brigade is destroyed. Right. Charlie's opening up with his horse artillery. Before you roll, what are you actually firing at? Okay, so if you're firing at a square, you get a bonus. Let's just check that, just see if that's at effective range. Artillery target is square. No, you get plus two combat dice for firing at a square, even if you're at long range. And you will be at long range, won't you? Which square are you firing at? There's two squares here. Should we do better fire at the closer one? Yeah, I think it might be higher rank. Oh, no, the same rank. Quite the closer one, just in case it is effective range. Okay. Come on. It's pretty, pretty good. So a seven plus an extra casualty dice. Do you want to check the range, anyone? But I think it's pretty certainly more than 24. So effective range is one casualty, and there was one from the combat dice as well. So that's two casualties against that Russian square. Okay, right, so okay. that's your artillery battery fired. Uh, Dan, what about your artillery in the centre here? You're going to have another go yeah. pummeling your favourite target of my battalion in line. So this is at effective range. Uh, oh, you got artillery assault. Oh, that's, that's big. That's big. That's the end of that battalion, I think. That is. They've got 11 now. So that's three. That's four casualties. They're gone. And a discipline test. They're gone. All right, that Russia, Russian battalion goes, and we will have a falter test on this brigade in right. the centre. Here go, in the, in the, la the guard lancers go. This is not going to go well for the hussars. Well, that's not bad. They cause four casualties. Charlie gets three re-rolls. Oh, I caused five. He's only caused five against four, so you win. Got, no, by six. Oh, six. Six casualties, you win by two, you will drive the Hazars back. All right, so as a result of that, the Prussian Hazars, sorry, Russian Hazars were driven off, 
driven off the table, they've retreated off this table edge, and the Lancer's pulled back to reform. So that's it, that's the end of turn five. And let's have a look at how we're doing. So we have Russian Guard Cavalry on the flank, and the Empress Dragoons can follow them up uh, onto the table edge this turn now. Uh, so that's a powerful force of French cavalry there. The Russian position, which was looking very solid in the centre, is now outflanked. Some of the units are having to go into square, uh, which will make them susceptible to French artillery fire. Um, on the left, it's not looking good. Large numbers of guards, brigades piling in towards the remnants of the Russian line here. Uh, in the centre, where we look OK, our artillery battery has driven back the young guard into the woods, and I don't think an attack is coming out of there uh, for the next couple of turns. So let's see what happens as we move into turn Starting six. On the far Russian left, the far left brigade of Young Guard is hesitant, but otherwise all French units are active. Um, did you put any special orders in? Artillery. artillery assault on the French main battery in the centre. We tried to put artillery assault on the Russians, but we failed our uh, activation test, so our brigade here is hesitant. We didn't have enough for a reroll because we had to put two dice onto this brigade, which is faltering. Let's do the falter test. We roll a four. I think we might accept a four, which probably is a retire result. Let's have a look what we get. So on a four, it's a rally. So the brigade successfully rallies, retreating units, but routed units disperse. Remove the falter marker and mark as hesitant. If I'm within nine inches of the formed enemy, I have to step back. So I think my skirmishers will have to form back, but that is it. And your whole line up here. No, they're in a different brigade. So it's uh, just this brigade here that's uh, got to take that roll. All right, I'll reform this unit and mark it as hesitant, and then we'll roll for initiative. All right, so our skirmishers had a pop of passing fire as the brigade moved in, did cause one casualty. We now got a defensive volley from my square, uh, square, my column, so this will be at half effect. It'll be a standard volley. Um, let's see how we do. We roll a seven. That won't be great. So a standard volley is two casualties. Uh, that will take you down by one, because we halve it. Ah, in fact, it's not even that good. We're unformed, so a seven goes down to a five, which is only one casualty, half effect, uh, takes you down below one. You don't do uh, uh, any other rolls, so that has no effect. So only one casualty caused on that battalion charging in. All right, let's do the charge results as this unit of young guard attacks another Russian line unit. All right, let's roll the real charge results. French are on minus two. We roll a six, that goes down to a four. What do the French get? They do better, they've got a 10. Are you gonna re-roll that, Dan? I'm all right. No, I'm you're all right. right on that, you're it's all right on that. That's out. a wipeout, that's six more. Um, so we have to do a risk to general test, which we pass, fortunately, but they are routed. They disappear from table, and the young guard can charge so on. Winning, winning, by, um, winning by six, my, my unit's destroyed, and the guard get to charge on. They're going to charge on into the flank of this artillery battery. Dan has rolled a 13, is that right? A uh, 12. A 12. 5, 4, and 3. 12. 5, 4, and 3, 7, 12, you're right. Go on, you can count. I can't. OK, let's see if a 12 gets them up and into the flank of the guns. Let's see what the young guard do. The Russians are on minus 4 for being charged in the flank. They roll an 8. So that takes them down to a 4. What can the French do this time? They roll a five. Um, you get a re-roll. Yeah, you're going to re-roll a two. He's going to re-roll his two. He gets a six. That's a nine. A nine plays a four. Uh, that will be minus five. Um, the attackers retire, take one casualty, and I've got a feeling uh, that if it's artillery, um, they will get wiped out, but I will just check. Yeah, so the guard win again. Um, I was reading that wrong. Uh, I was reading the minus five rather than the plus five result. So the attacker takes the ground, the defender retreats, and if the defenders are artillery, they disperse. So I thought the artillery would go, and indeed they did. And the guard can move forward and occupy the artillery position. They're firmly in the flank of the Russian position. So we're just, uh, Dan and I were just discussing this. I'm not sure we've got the, the interpretation quite right. Please let us know in the comments if anyone knows for sure. So uh, the artillery has been destroyed. That uh, means three units in this brigade, uh, the two units in this brigade of three have gone, and it's a falter test because a unit has been wiped out. So this is a demoralized brigade, and any demoralized brigade that takes a falter result uh, is automatically dispersed. The falter test isn't taken till the start of the next turn, and at that point, this brigade is demoralized. So uh, I think that probably means 
that this unit also disappears at this stage. We're going to play it that way. Let us know if we've got that right. Cheers. Right, so we finished turn six. There was some uh, artillery fire against my squares down here, and uh, Charlie is moving his cavalry forward to keep these forces pinned and subject to his artillery fire. Over here, we've slightly repositioned our forces to try and head off the flank attack, but uh, there doesn't look much hope left for the Russians. I think we might call it after this turn. Let's see what happens as we move into... What turn are we on, Charlie? Seven. Turn seven. All right, somewhat tragically, I have no falters, and I rolled an eight, and the bleeding French rolled a ten. So seven turns in a row, seven turns of French initiative. Clearly, Napoleon is just off table for this game. All right, charges for the French. Let's see what happens. It's looking like the end of the Russian position. So the young guard, which have had so much success, continued their charge up the Russian flank into this uh, Russian uh, musketeer unit that had just turned to face. Uh, but unfortunately, it exposed itself to the one unit of the young guard brigade that wasn't involved in the assault on the guns earlier. It's come up out of the woods and charged it on the other flank. So uh, let's see how we do as we charge in with these three units against this Russian line. All right, so uh, here we go. Defensive volley uh, against the unit attacking from the front. We roll a four, that'll be no effect, so no defensive fire. Uh, for the attack from the front, um, Daniel here gets no bonus because we're both line troops, but Dan does get a reroll. For the attack from the flank, Dan gets a plus four. Let's see how the Russians do. They do pretty well, they roll a 10. The one attacking from the front uh, gets a reroll. Okay, that's a 7 against a 10, so that's a minus 3. And then let's do the flank attack, so you'll get plus 4 on this one, Dan. Ah, an 8 against a 10. I think I might... It was a 10 I rolled, wasn't it? So it's a minus 2. So you stop and you volley me. Yeah. Okay, so that'll be 2d6. Uh, 4, 5 or 6s cause casualties. One casualty, and we'll move your no, troops marginally back. Open. You do, because you just take the best result. Yeah. So turn eight, just rolling my falter test for my Russian brigade. A three, I think, is a retire. Um, mm, that's not going to be good. Uh, let's just see what I have to do if I retire with this brigade. Um, for a line brigade, it is indeed a retire. If they're in strong points, they don't, but they're not in strong points. All close order units lose one casualty. Skirmishers lose uh, a base, but I lost my bases, which is what caused the artillery, uh, sorry, the falter test. So I have to go back 18 inches, which probably takes me off the table and I lose this brigade. So I'm going to have to re-roll. It's we roll a one, Savoir keeper. That's the end of this Russian brigade, and I think that's the end of the game. The Russians really only have two of their original uh, five brigades remaining. They think at this point the army breaks and they give up this hamlet, and they congratulate the French. Or begrudgingly accept that the French outmastered them in this game. Hope you enjoyed the game. Well done, Charlie. Good cavalry commanding. Well done, Dan. I think the unit of the game has got to be this young guard brigade here, which uh, drove from across the table over here, captured the village, broke the Russians down behind the village, came up, destroyed the artillery, and is poised to break another uh, Russian brigade here. So uh, really good fun, this one. And... Uh, Look forward to seeing you all next time. Remember to subscribe, leave us some comments, and we'll see you all again soon. Oh, and hope the sound has been better on this video. Cheers, everyone. Bye.